Hello, welcome to Infinity. And uh, now we're going to have a look at a very powerful tool called Blend Ranges. It's very similar to the Photoshop Blend If, except that it's better still. Um, it has been described as Blend If on steroids. So let's have a look. It's a way of selecting from within this picture and well, let's get going with it and over here you can get to it via the little gear icon there so you have to know what it is but you hover over it it says blend ranges click on that and up comes a box here which says blend options it's the same thing don't worry don't worry too much about the things at the top we'll talk about the below in a bit but these are the ones we want and for the moment it's the left hand one because we're working on the source layer in other words, the same layer. If you had layers underneath other things happening, we might work over here. We'll see that in a bit. And let's have a look at it. And this is a bit like the uh, histogram um, in, in curves. So when we're doing our curves, then we have a similar sort of dots which we drag around the place and do things. And if I drag this down, look what's happening. A lot of things are kind of disappearing. It's going to that checkerboard. <clears throat> because the up-down axis here for all this is about transparency or opacity or alpha or whatever you want to call it uh, and the left right is from blacks through greys to whites just like curves and the histogram of course so let's pull this down here pull this down here Ooh, and it's all gone because we've pushed everything down here that's not much good, so let's push this back up again. And now we've got the darks, mostly selected. So you've got the blacks, so you can all see solidly the whites of disappearing, becoming transparent because we pulled these all the way down. We can click in the middle and make other points and drag these around. So we really can have all kinds of ways of making things transparent. So let's say we click around to here. Then we click another point here. We drag this across and it's going to stop. It's not going to go any further because it makes no sense if this one is to the left of this one here. But look at what we've chosen here is a big chunk here of the dark elements down this end of the picture. And to turn this now into a proper selection, we go up here to select and that's the key one selection from layer. And there you go, it's made a selection. So how do we use the selection now? Well, classic way is to use a bit of curves. So we click on the adjustments down here, go up to curves, and it's going to put a curve in here. And what it does here is, if we see here, is it's turned that selection here into a mask. So we can now play around with this, but that doesn't seem to be, you can't see what it's doing to the real picture, can you? <coughs> so Let's go back up to the background up there. We're going to take off this, so we hit the reset at the bottom. We don't need this anymore because we've got the selection. And we click on Select, Deselect, and the mask is still in here from that selection. So let's have a look at that again. Let's bring up the curves. Now when we go up and down, it'll go only for the area we selected. However, we've got a little bit of a problem here, which you may note as we go up here, look at the hard edge here, the hard edges, and that's because we have had a step change here. So we'd like to make that a little bit of a smoother transition. So a way to do this is to go back to this one here, and this is still up, this blend op options, blend ranges, um, box come it, it stays here until we tell it to go away even if we're not using it so no not a worry that's handy really so and the way to get it nice and more gradual one way is to just do triangles that sort of works but if you want to make it nice and smooth you can use uncheck the linear here so you can now make curves so I can do a curve here and a curve down there oops Let's take that down there a bit. We'll take that one off. We'll bring this one up here. And it's the usual thing here. You just play around until you get the shape you want. 
and make this one a little bit curvier. There we go. But you can literally make any shape you like here. But look what it's selected. This is taking this. Now we've got these nice smooth transitions here. So this should make life a lot easier. So again, select. Selection from layer creates a selection. Then when we put in a curves layer here, it will pick up that selection and make a mask so that the curves only affect this. However, we want to get rid of all these things here and see the original picture. So let's click back over this. We'll reset that so we can see the picture and we'll deselect all those marching ants. So we're back, but don't worry, the curves are still here. So let's bring the curves up. Now, if we pull up and down here, you know, we've got a much smoother curve and see that we pull this up here, it changes. You can hardly see the tra transitions. So we can, here's a way of working this. So we can even play with some of this and so on, play with the shapes of the curves, etc. But we now have basically made a selection and based on opacity and extremely flexible in the shape and the way that it and the way that it feathers off and so on. There's an even better way to do this. So let's have a look. What we're going to do is to put a curves layer directly in here. So and the way we do this is we set up here with the other one here, but let's do this first. So we go adjustments, curves, and let's put this over here because we want to use the Blend range is here. This little gear icon says, please, can I do it on this curves itself? <coughs> and because this is a curve which is attached to this here, and I'm just going to drag it above just to, for an explanation, but it's the same effect whether it's above or below because it says here underlying composition ranges. This means it's underneath the curves. In other words, Playing with this graph here, you're kind of like looking downwards. There's kind of some, some a bit of confusion around this sometimes, but by and large, if you're working on the pixel layers, I use the left hand one. And if you're using an adjustment or filter, I use the right hand one. So let's do the same sort of things we did before. Pull down here. And you can't see any selection happening here. Let's put that linear off. So we've got a curve coming down here. Let's bring this one up to a bit closer to make that curve. And this one curve. Yeah, there we go. Curve, curve, and so on. But <clears throat> so we have to know a little bit more about what we're doing here. We're not seeing it, but we can grab this and look at it so we can see what's happening here. We actually brightening up those shadows again and but now the, the advantage is we can play with this dynamically we can fiddle with this and adjust this again and you do parts of this or even say let's try something different let's pull down the left pull down the right what am I doing here because that turns it all off because I can drag up the middle and here we are, we are selecting, let's make that nicely curvy. We're now working on mid-tones. So I can select this, choose this up and down. And we have said, don't worry about the blacks. Don't worry about the whites. Tones in the middle. All those, please. So now we've got a mid-tone control. And we can do this, we can add extra curve layers. So I can put an extra curve layer on here. It's going to disappear into this. Let's put that above. There we go. So here's another one. And I could say work on this one now. So this here. And we'll put in a... Uh, there's not many highlights here. I can put another darks one. So we'll put this down here. And... Let's do a bit of a curve here. 
So now, when I turn this up and down, I'm affecting the shadows. Yeah, so we can see, say, along here. So I can play with the shadows here. I can then switch to this one here. And now I'm doing the midtones. So I could have a whole set of curves, different shapes in here. And I'm just changing different lights within the picture. And not only that, because the mask is not here, I can play around with the masks as well. So if I'm doing something, say this this one here, and I'm oops Daisy, let's doing something like this. Maybe I'm going, oh I want something here, but I this is happening a little bit too much. Because it's a mask, I can paint on it. So um, so to remove the effect, I'm going to paint in black. So I go over here, select the paintbrush tool, and I'm painting here in black. So if I paint on here, I'm just putting back the shadow where it was. Yeah, because you can see there the little bit of the mask sort of appearing there. And so I've got this control Again, so I've got a huge amount of control of luminosity. Very, very easily done and totally flexible. Isn't it brilliant? Right, I think I'll stop there. So, thank you very much for watching.